quite amazing how bees can survive in the winter. This colony probably has, let's see, there's 10 frames, 0.66 pounds of frames. It's probably six pounds of bees in this colony, which is approximately 18,000 bees. And it's amazing to think that they can survive in the really cold winters in Michigan we get um, usually not too often below zero but it, it does get below zero and sometimes especially with wind chill it can get negative 60 but um, I don't know without the wind chill it might be negative 20 here and there negative 10 usually not not too often where it gets down to that but just to think that these little bees can uh, can make it through the winter is pretty amazing. They keep the cluster at the core of the cluster at least. If there's no brood in there, they keep it at I think it's 60, 68 degrees. Really. As the weather gets colder, they start clustering and I think it's when it's uh, 57 degrees out they start forming a cluster and as the temperature grows gets colder they make the cluster size tighter and tighter and tighter the bees get denser and denser and there are several layers on the outside of the cluster it's kind of a, um, a ball shape or an oval shape and as as it gets colder they go tighter 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 and they always, in the center of it, maintain about 68 degrees when there's no brood. When there's brood inside of there, they can maintain it at about 93 degrees. So they're able to raise brood in the middle of winter. Usually in Michigan, there's a time period where they're not raising any brood, but there's bees that are on the outside layer of the cluster. They vibrate their wing muscles to heat up their uh, blood and that heats up their body temperature and then they form multiple layers and they pack really tightly together. The tighter they are, the, the better they're able to control that inner core temperature. And that inner core temperature is where the queen hangs out and those bees on the surface, they rotate and they go into the inner core and then the warmer bees go to the outside and they continually rotate. They did a study once where they they took, I think it was, they had a cluster of 30,000 bees and they lowered the temperature to negative 112 degrees. And those bees were able to stay alive for 12 hours with that kind of clustering. So they're not really heating the external air around the cluster, they're heating inside the cluster. So a lot of people say, well, you don't have to worry about insulating the hives because they're not controlling the outside air temperature, which is true, but you have a hive like this nuke colony and the cluster's down in the bottom and they're maintaining that temperature. And outside of the hive, say it gets to zero degrees. Well, if the clusters inside of there, there is heat radiating off the cluster. And instead of that heat just escaping out into nowhere, it would be ideal if that heat would stay inside of the box because they'll make it easier for them to maintain the cluster temperature. They won't have to consume as many stores and it'll be easier to maintain that temperature. So do you need to insulate them? Yes. And they've actually done studies where they've compared in, in cold climates, they've compared insulated with lightly insulated with non-insulated and the lightly insulated and the heavily insulated did significantly better in survival rates compared to non-insulated so it is important for them to have that cavity insulated because they don't have to work as hard if some of that heat rate stays inside of that cluster area and a lot of people say well you don't have to worry about heat it's humidity is the biggest thing and it's true humidity 
humidity does kill a colony and what happens is as that cluster is formed they're consuming nectar and they're metabolizing that and and that nectar becomes vapor uh, the, the humidity inside of the internal core is quite high I think it's 80 percent humidity and that humidity radiates out it, it's moist damp air and then as it escapes the cluster it it can turn to ice especially if the inside of the hive is really cold so one of the things that you want to make sure happens is that damp air has a way to escape if you have I think it's 12 pounds of honey consumed by the bees you get about a gallon of uh, a gallon of water release something like that maybe it was half a gallon I don't know it was quite a bit and if there's no way for that moist air to escape it's just going to settle on the insides of the hive on the combs and especially on the top cover because hot air rises it's going to rise from the wherever the cluster is it's going to come to the top it's going to hit the top cover the inner cover and if there's no way for that damp air to escape it's going to condensate and then start dripping down on the bees preferably the air is uh, escapes through the the top entrance and the, and the vent so that's why i'm having a front vent and a back vent